Star. Hello, everyone. It's, I'm Jeannie Ralston, co-founder of Next Tribe, and we are so thrilled to be welcoming Amy Ferris and Marta Kaufman to our Thursday night talks we have regularly, and they're going to be talking about their own friendship, which you're going to be amazed at that story, but also we're going to talk about female friendships in, in general, especially how they're, they become more and more important, or that's my opinion at least. But, uh, so I want to introduce, as everybody, can you mute yourself, everyone, so we can We're still hearing something. It's hard to see her. Okay, good. Thanks, everyone. So, so Amy, I know Amy Ferris, um, and this, is how this whole thing came about is because Amy Ferris is such a wonderful writer, wonderful friend. My goodness, she is just fills my heart. And she's an author, an editor, a screenwriter, a playwright. And her memoir is called Marrying George Clooney, Confessions from a Midlife Crisis. We're going to have to hear about that and, and what Amal says about that. So she's written for TV and film and for, you know, she's written books. And she's been an editor of an anthology called Dancing at the Shane Prom. And she's been editor of Shades of Blue, Writers on Depression, Suicide, and Feeling Blue. And one thing, if, if you're lucky enough to, to be one of her followers, and I hope you will follow her on Facebook, and I don't know if she's still doing it every day, but she's doing regular postings called What I Know, post-coffee, pre-wine, and they're brilliant. They're brilliant. They're just, they're, they feel like they're off the cuff and, and, but for, for, um, but they're so deep. She can, she manages to do that, like write that something that feels so approachable, but so deep at the same time. It's really a gift. And then Marta Kaufman. Hi, Marta. Hi. It, uh, she's a writer and TV producer, best known as a co-creator and producer of Friends, The Friends. Yes, The Friends sitcom alongside David Crane and she's also created one of our favorites Grace and Frankie I mean that's like talking right to us she's also produced Veronica's Closet with Kirstie Alley and Jesse with Christina Applegate so you're big time <laughs> we just love having you so I wanted to start Amy, Amy was telling me on the phone about the about your friendship and how she thought that'd be a great that how you two got together and I, th I thought we'd start with Amy if you can kind of give us an idea of how this all came about that you two became such fast and beautiful friends. I would love to do that. Um, I knew of, you know obviously I knew who Marta was yeah. right but we have a couple of mutual friends Patty Linsky, Julie Silver, Mary Connolly mm -hmm. and we met online you know, we, we just kind of liked each other and I would post something, she would respond and I would respond. And during this time with COVID, um, we actually decided that we should have cocktails. We should have a cocktail party. And to be really honest with you, it was really truly like love at first sight, right? You, you, it's so hard to find women of a certain age and I'm talking 40 up and up um that you really connect to you know like alexia was saying you know alexia and i talk every single day you know we just um and part of how marta and i got to know each other is you know we had cocktails on on thursdays and chatted and we were both very open and vulnerable and all of a sudden we started sharing stories in our lives and we weren't ashamed. And it was so extraordinary to meet a woman online um, and then say, you know, I hope this person is in my life forever. Oh, wow. She became so important to me. And, you know, and, and I was able to send her Alexia's script because I had just read, read Alexia's gorgeous screenplay. And I said, oh, would you read it? It's so beautiful. And, you know, when she loved Alexia's writing, and that's always really neat to share another woman, mm -hmm. right? Say, I have this wonderful friend that you should know. And, and she's so easy to love. 
Um, Marta, that's what my so, ex husband would not agree with you. Oh, <laughs> that's where we go and say, Well, fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> that's the part of the conversation where we say, <laughs> Yep. And so, Marta, had you known about Amy? I guess you had mutual friends. Um, you know, um, I had read Amy's book, Marrying George Clooney, which I loved. Um, and just found Amy's voice to be so unique and so special and so profound um, and hilarious. Um, my favorite combination of things. Right. And as Amy said, we sort of started having this quiet back and forth on Facebook um, for, and have mutual friends who are all phenomenal people. And these are all people you think, well, Amy's friends with them. You know, right. Amy's going to be great. Um, but when Amy and I actually met Zoom to Zoom um, <laughs> for the first time, I felt like I'd always known her. You. Um, <laughs> it felt familiar and comfortable, like like we went to camp together or something oh. and have known each other forever. <laughs> and I have to say, I imagine, I imagine the day, I'm getting chills just thinking about it, the day I get to meet Amy in person, oh. I am going to throw myself in her arms and cry <laughs> like a baby. And cry like a baby. <laughs> um, th well, that is um, something there, we've written about it, about female friendship and how important it is it is now to us. So, Marta, were you looking for, for, uh, for more friends or you were you looking for a, a different tribe, as we say, or, or either of you? Were you? You know, um, for me, I wasn't looking per se. I wasn't thinking, oh, I need a new friend. I've always felt that it's, more difficult as we get older to make new friends. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, I have friends who I met, you know, many years ago, one of them is on this call, you know, like family to me, we've been together a very long time. New friends are hard to make after a certain age. Right. Um, so when, and, and I get like a little kid with a new friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I saw the possibility of a new friendship, I just got all oh, like excited that, that here was a new chance for a whole new channel and a whole new, each friend brings out a new piece of you. Uh, nice. And yeah, I do. That's one thing, reason why Next Tribe exists is because it's, har it's harder to meet, meet, pe meet new friends at this age. And we're all going through transitions looking for our tribe like-minded women and that's what what we're about and i'm so glad that you two found each other that way um now i'm wondering if if you had if your uh, connection was more intense or quicker because of the time being COVID, or the medium being online or both you you know um we were supposed to meet in la we were going to have drinks with marcy right Right. And so we were, we had already planned that we were going to get together. And in a very bizarre way, it's almost, it's more wonderful that we haven't because we've become so, we, our friendship has become so fucking powerful. And I, I'm going to get emotional, but it's, oh. I know, I know that had we met back months ago, we would have met and we would have really liked each other. But because of the pandemic and because I got, to, I got to fall in love with the woman that Marta is, not because she's this writer and this extraordinary person and she's got Grace and Frankie, but that she's this incredible human being. Mm. And I think that's, that's how it really grew. You know, when you don't have the opportunity to meet someone in person because you know, obstacles galore. Um, you get to know somebody on a very different level. It was kind of like Marta and I, and you know, there's no bullshit. And I'm being honest, you know, it's like, for example, you know, um, 
I sent Marta these wonderful masks. I know that we're all wearing these like masks, right? And I thought, what can I do for her? What can I give her? And so my friend Allison Taylor's sister, Carol Salvata, makes all of these great, great masks. So I sent her a couple of masks and I thought she, did, she should have a gift. And we seem to, we seem to um, kind of honor each other. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not afraid to say, are you okay? When Ken was in the hospital, Marta was right there. Just mm -hmm. as, you know, just as Karen Haycox was, she was, Marta was right there texting me, are you okay? What do you need? Um, you know, you don't get that very often, right? Yes. And, and, and I think the, the pandemic, part of, I think, what happens is we are all so isolated. Yeah. Um, that it was ripe for um, a new friendship to develop out of that isolation. It was fodder for a new friendship. It was it was um, in, in some ways crucial and invigorating um, as new friends can be. And, and the other thing I have to say, and this is you know, from reading Amy and, and the times that we've gotten to really talk, you can be messy with Amy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. You can be fucked up. You can be fucked up. And um, that is fine by her. So there, I, I feel I am someone who does not always let the cracks show, but I feel like Amy is someone with whom I could do that. And I agree with Amy. I'm not sure if it would be, have been the same had we met beforehand. Is there, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, and, and that's something too, like um, we're not afraid to be messy. We're not afraid to say, oh my God, I'm going through this, or oh, what a fucked up day, or as Karen Haycox will say, first it's going to suck, then it's going to be okay. So, <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's not, I'm not afraid to share the things that suck in my life. And, and I also love, I love that, that Marta is a woman that roots other women on that cheers other women on. There's not a lot of women you could say that about. There are plenty of women that do that, but she genuinely is rooting you on. And that to me is extraordinary. That's and extraordinary. I think you do too, Amy. So. Yes, I was gonna say. <laughs> Definitely. So, and, and we have, uh, next tribe we have something, we have different, all kinds of virtual events. And one of them is a Thursday morning, we call it a coffee talk. and People from all over who've never met each other before are, are so like open with each other about their fears, their sadness, people cry. It's, you know, it usually is about 12 to, to 18 women, but and most of us have not met each other before, but in person, but there's just a freedom. And, I'm, and it made me wonder about, it. that's why I'd asked about the medium. Is, it, is there something about being a Zoom call, it's safer or... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's safer, but it, I think, you know what, Jeannie, we're all, we're all going through so much shit right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all isolating. We're all figuring out who we want to be and what we want to be and who we want in our life. Yeah. Who we don't want in our life. Um, you know, I think that that's part of it. And I, and, and getting to know Marta, it, I know that I'll never let her go. And it has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, you get to know somebody when, you know, when the scaffolding is down. Mm -hmm. yeah. know, you know, out in the world, like if she were out in the world working and, you know, I think we're, we're kind of like seeing how much more equal we all are. Mm hmm right yeah it affects all of us i mean nobody's immune nobody is immune to to what is going on in the world and i think that we put aside a lot of that and you know and i think it's um i think it's really kind of extraordinary you know and and as i was saying before like you know with alexia you know she and i we we check in every day you know it's like no matter what and that is so glorious to me 
And I'm going to just. I think, I, I think just to, to um, add on to what Amy was saying and what you were asking, I think the Zoom experience is intense. <laughs> I do. I think it's super intense. I think it's more intense than sitting across from each other at a nice restaurant with a glass of wine. Um, it's intense. You are face to face, eyes to eyes. And I think because of that, the walls are more transparent. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's no waiter coming and saying, you want another glass of wine or, you know, yeah. background noises, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah. by the way, I'm not, I'm not letting Amy go either. Oh, God, that's sweet. And I do want to say, Jeannie, that both Marta and I kind of got fancy for tonight. Because when we're on our Zoom calls with our glasses of wine, my hair is like really screwed up. Hers is pulled I back. Pulled back. I mean, it's amazing. This is kind of like we got fancy for this. It is so <laughs> true. I washed my hair this morning for this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. That's the only time I put on my hair. Fancy. We got fancy for this. I just want to say to everyone uh, who's listening that, that it came in later to put to write your questions or comments if you have a have a comment about your in friendship experience, especially during this time, you can write it in the chat and we'll call on you. Or if you have questions, it's, it's great because this, we all, this is something that we all, it touches all of us. So, um, and I'm just wondering what, why is it that, do you, why do you think female friendships have be, get more important as, as we get older? <laughs> so, I think because we get fucked over so much more. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think it, I'm going to actually, Marta, you answer that. I think you can answer that really beautifully. I think there's a couple reasons. Um, one of them is who else can understand? You know, it is, it is uh, with women that I feel most myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we tend to support each other in ways that I don't feel that is always true with male friendships. We listen, we cry for each other. Um, and I think as we get older and we imagine what our lives are going to look like, what we want is the comfort and familiarity of women. Yeah. And is it true, you were saying that it's harder to, to meet, um, meet, make new friends at this age, but do a lot of us at, at around this age, are we more likely to be shedding some friendships and, and looking for something? I mean, oh, I, I want to talk to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I turned 60, I learned a very valuable lesson. And that lesson was, I don't have to finish every book I start. <laughs> it was so liberating. There are too many wonderful books out there that I'll never get to finish in my lifetime. There's no need to put myself through hell just to say I finished it. Right. But what I learned from that is that that is true of people as well. Yes. The ones who don't make me happy the ones who don't bring me joy, even if it's out of emotional pain, mm -hmm. the ones who are toxic, um, I don't need to finish that. What I need to do is start with the new women and, and read them as a book. Ooh, Ooh that's nice. Yeah. yeah. No. I and I I think that's true because, because as we're getting older, we're realizing we don't have to put up with that shit. You know, we're like, okay, I don't like, I mean, maybe consciously or unconsciously, we're thinking, okay, we have only so much time left. Do I, let's value our time, value who and surround ourselves with people who, um, who make, who help us make the most of, of our day or time. So I think that's really important. And we've done stories about making you know how to make friends at the, at, the, at this time so i'm not gonna even that's a that's a it's all it, you just join next tribe that's what it is <laughs> but um marta i want to ask you um since we're t since you're probably the, the 
expert on friendship because of your at least two of your your shows. <laughs> What's the difference between friendships in in your twenties that was depicted in Friends, and then the friendships the friendship that Grace and Frankie have, and that we as women this age have? Friends was about that time in your life where your friends are your family. Mm. Um, before you have your families. Mm. It's one of the reasons the show had to end. They started to have families of their own. We all know when that happens, yes, you retain some friendships, but you also spread. Mm -hmm. um, Grace and Frankie is about that time in your life after your family has grown up. Mm. You're no longer needed by them in an everyday way. And it's that time in your life when you realize you can start over at any point. Yeah. You can make new friends at any point. You can start a business at any point. You can, you can make toilets and vibrators and, and, <laughs> and friends and you can have sex and you can do all these things. Um, but it, it's at that later, from that later perspective where you've been through so much of your life, a portion of your career, raising your family, you know, it, it's, it's a whole new chapter. Right. And I, I, somebody, I think, um, I think it was Suzanne Levine, um, Amy, who compared yeah. it to another, your, your, um, it's compared, it's comparable to your adolescence because you're, you've got a lot of hormones and you're wondering what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Or something. I, you know what? I love that you brought that up because everybody should read Suzanne Levine's You've Got to Have Girlfriends. Right. Everyone should read that book. And we did, we did excerpt it, which I, I yeah, but, but you know, now that we're talking about girlfriends and, you know, and 50 is the new 50 and the fuck you <laughs> 50s, and we can all thank Suzanne Brown Levine for that. Um, but that's a great book. For, it is. You know, especially now while we're, you know, isolating and thinking about it. But, well, um, and, and she quoted a statistic in that book that, um, not having good friends or not having a good social work or social network is as dangerous as smoking a pack a day or something to your to your health so i mean i, I love that i love i think about that you know like anybody who says you know nurturing your friendships is just a, you know, a frivolous thing or a luxury no it is part of taking care of your health mentally and physically so i love that part and you know, the other thing coming off of what Marta said is, um, you know, we're at a point in our life where we can shed toxic friends. That's really important. It's important that we stop taking bullshit or letting people treat us badly or, you know, it, if we learn anything from this time, right? This, you know, being in the middle of this pandemic is what do we want to fill our life with? Yes. And who do we want to fill our lives with? And who are we going to share this, our stories with? And, you know, and so I think a big portion of that too is, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of friends that we, that we have in our life that we really, that don't fill us and don't give us what we need. Well, Amy, and, I'm wondering, I mean, you're such a great, you're such so a supportive soul. Have you ever had to, to shed a friend? I mean, it seems, it's very difficult, I imagine. Oh my fucking God, are you kidding? <laughs> Have I had to shed a friend? A few of them are actually now hanging. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> they've become rugs. Um, no, but yes, of course I have. Okay. You know, well, I I think there's a difference between being, I am very, very, very supportive and I champion women and I, and I will always champion the women in my life who mean the world to me, right? Um, but it's not always reciprocated. And, and that's very, uh, you know, that's a little, that's a, that's a difficult thing to kind of walk through. It's, for example, um, there's this, I met this other friend on Facebook, Jessica Keener, who is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant writer, right? I and thought I saw her on here. I think she's on there. There she is. Yes. Is she? Yes. Oh my God. Okay, wow. That's so, anyway, so Jessica is one of those incredible women that, you know, she's, she's strong and, and amazing and, and a champion of, you know, she also doesn't, you know, she, she is also one of those people that will say, you know, toxicity is not a good thing, you know? 
Yeah. Um, and she's, she's mighty special. She's a mighty incredible human and a brilliant writer, you know? Um, but yeah, we got to get rid of, you know, we got to get rid of the people in our life that don't treat us well, that don't reciprocate, that, that are not giving us what we need. We really don't, you know, I think there's a difference, right, between being a champion of women and, 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 and being a fool. Right. Yeah. And then I've also found as I get older, there are people in my life who I've come to call the dementors of my life, the ones who just suck the life out of you. Oh! Um, <laughs> yes. You know, I don't know how much life I've got left in me, but I'm not giving any up for that. <laughs> yes. So people listening, do not be a dementor. I don't think anybody here would be a dementor. <laughs> like being here, I think you're, you're surely not. But um, yes, that's, that's a, there are those types. Oh, it's very hard. Um, Marta, when you, were, when you write about Grace and Frankie, I mean, the, the whole premise of the, at least season one or, um, is that they, were, they knew each other for so long, but then they come to friendship. Obviously, they, what brings them together is that they, their husbands fall in love. And, um, but what is it that really cements they, they're so different? So what do you um, say cements their friendship? I think they bring out the best in each other. Mm. That's you know, I think um, they, they temper each other without um, interfering in who they are. That's you know, I think they don't put up with each other's bullshit too much and they can say it and they're, they're honest about it, but they lift each other up and they support each other. And bottom line, you know, because they went through this parallel experience and they were there for each other, they love each other. Mm. They just love each other. And it doesn't, I mean, part of me feels like it doesn't always have to make sense. Right, right, yeah. Friendships don't always make sense. Sometimes people just meet their soulmates and who knows why, but you know, Grace and Frankie needed each other. <laughs> And did you, uh, uh, Marta, did you write, do you have friends like that? Or did you write from your own experience about your, your, that kind of a friendship? Um, honestly, no. What, more than anything, once we came up with the basic idea for the show, um, um, it was about Jane and Lily's relationship as people that started to tell us what the show would be oh. and what that relationship would be. I'll just tell you one very quick story. We were talking in the very, very early stages because um, one of the things we obviously wanted to explore was sexuality in women of a certain age. And Jane was telling us about things besides Viagra and Cialis that men use to help their erections. And she was talking about uh, one man that she was with, she had to give him an injection. And Lily said, you have got to get younger boyfriends. <laughs> and we, we thought, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's the beginning of that relationship. And because Jane and Lily love each other, um, you know, it makes it feel very honest and real. Oh, that's, that's a, that's a great story. I'm going to, um, open it up some because I know there's so many questions. I know that, uh, Karen Haycox, you had, if you want to unmute yourself, you had a comment about the straw that I thought was really great. Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much, Jeannie. And thank you, Amy, for inviting me and Marta. Wow. This is pretty cool. All the rest of you too some of whom I know. So um, it, and what I added was when we were talking about it, I had a therapist once um, who actually said something useful to me that I can actually remember. And she said uh, that everybody is a psychic straw and they either suck or they blow. They're either <laughs> additive. <laughs> They're either additive or they, or they, you know, or they subtract from you. I know that would cost me a lot of money to get that line. Feel free to use it. 
<laughs> but that, anyway, um, so I, go ahead. I just gonna say I'm also infinitely qualified to answer the other question that somebody asked about Amy because I am very very blessed to call Amy my friend as well in in, in real life IRL and uh, and the answer is yes people do uh, tell her that she looks like Meryl Streep so there you go I've answered that age old question that is in the comments. Oh, uh, yes, you do, Amy. Um, Kim Kimberly Sampson has a comment, too, about the, the difference between younger and older friends. You, if you want to unmute yourself, um, Kimberly. Oh, sure, yeah. I just think um, that when you're younger, and I was a huge Friends fan, that was my time period also, and then having children and being caught up in that, your friendships are very situational. And it's more about what you're doing together with those people at that moment. And as you get older, it's more about who you truly are at your core. And do you have a soul love match, which clearly, Marta and Amy, you do. Um, and I think that's, that's where those deep, really beautiful friendships come in when it's, it, it's no longer, there's no entertainment of children or going to a bar or whatever. It's just two people connecting. Yes, I think that's true. I, I, I've written about that where you, and one of the pleasures of empty nest is that you don't have to hang out with the parents of your fr kids' friends if you don't want to. It just all that goes away, you know. Oh, the crazy lady, whatever. So, um, so yeah, I think that's that's a that's a good point. But then it puts that also if you if you don't have kids, you know, if you're not interacting with people because of your kids, where do you find these kind of great friends, like-minded friends, when you if, if you're transitioning out of family and I don't know Amy and you found each other on on the internet and through no but I I I believe you can find friends in in many ways um right now this is not a time to meet people at the grocery store but I have to say I've been in situations where I've spotted someone and I thought I want to be that person's friend <laughs> and what about the, just the way they look they dress I mean just it's an energy yeah you know, it's an energy, just someone who just has light. Right, right. Yeah. And, and what about you, Amy? You, where do you find, where have you met your new friends besides Marta? <laughs> where do I find friends? Yeah. <laughs> Other than the Humane Society? Um, yeah. You know, I, like with Marta, you know, I online or, you know, through, or and in some other ways, you know, I've become friends with, people who I've known online or through Facebook, you know, when you start, you just kind of connect and then you meet in real life and it's, you know, it's a lovely, wonderful kind of connection. Um, I think also I and Karen Haycox can join in on this. It's very different when you're living in a small town. Okay. It's really different. When I was living in New York city, you know, I would go into some place and I, think, oh, that person looks cool, or that person has a really good energy. Living in a small town is very different, because you kind of know everyone, you know, um, and so it's not as easy to just, but, you know, Karen Haycox came to our literary festival, and it was like, boom, you know, and now she's living in our small town, and we <laughs> to hang out with her, and, you know, I, I think it's, there's a piece of magic to it. Well, you know, there's, there's a great small town. It is. A small town. <laughs> and Amy Ferris is the, uh, is the magic through which I know everyone in this small town. And those of us who are all assembled on this call from this small town will tell you that she is like the touchstone um, for certainly for me and for so many. It's like, you know, so very, very grateful to be here and, and, uh, and share Martha, Marta's passion for, for the Amy effect. I, the first thing I said to Amy when I met her was, oh my God, you have, hand to God, I said, oh my God, you have amazing energy. That's the first thing I said to Amy Ferris. So, and the truest thing. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is, you know, and now Karen is my North Star, you know, and, oh. and, and here, but it's a small town. And I think it's what Marta is saying too, is, you know, there are people that have a certain energy, just like there are people who have an energy that you don't want to go near. Mm -hmm. Right, you, you you see them and you think, oh, stay the fuck away, don't come near me. Um, 
you know, so I, I think it's also, hopefully when we, as we get older, we also get more, we get wiser, we become more intuitive, we become a little bit more discerning. We, you know, it's, um, they're friendships that you want to have for the rest of your life, not just for a week. Right. And Michelle Martel, you had a comment about that too, kind of along the same lines. If you want to unmute yourself, she had, if she's listening, if not, she, I'll read it. Well, I, was, I was thinking about the comment. So we actually, early days of Next Tribe, we made a little card that said, you seem like a fun person. And it was there so that if you were, you know, back in the, in the old days, you know, standing in line at Starbucks or whatever, you could go up to somebody and hand them this card that made it make sense. Like, I would like to be friends with you because you seem cool. And it was so much fun and people loved it because it just gave you this way to talk to somebody. So I just, you know, it's harder to do if you don't like a purpose. It seems creepy, but. Yeah, but um, yes, I call it a friend flirt card. Like you meet, you see somebody. <laughs> And you, it said something like, hey, you seem really cool. I bet you'd like this, this magazine or something. <laughs> but Michelle, you also said that about getting better at seeing our soul friends as we get older. Well, I think that's right. As we get, as we get older, we understand the difference between sort of the circumstantial friends and the people that you just lock in on. And you're like, yep, ride or die. That's, you're my person, so... Yes, and I think that's we know we know as we get older and it, it, that what works for us and what doesn't. We okay. know kind of like okay, I've seen that type of person before, or you get the the, the dementor vibe, Marta, and you're just like okay, <laughs> from from day one. So uh, what what other uh, questions do we have? If you want to raise your hand, if you have a, I can't read. There's so many questions. And well, Judy Brown has a question or it's not a question but it's a pretty amazing thing okay. she said you know yourself better so you can choose friends authentically mm. and i think that that's really important yes you yeah. know and i think as women we also need to be really honest with ourselves that not all women are the women that we want in our lives right mm -hmm. you know um not all women are great women not all women are kind um and I think at, at a certain age, what you're looking for, you know, it's like with Marta is that, you know, she's somebody that I can call and say, oh my God, I'm in pain. And she's going to hear me. And she's going to, and I love that. I love that it was so incredibly, and I hate to use this word, but instantaneous. It was like, there was no time for bullshit. You know, we were, <laughs> you know, it was like all of a sudden we're in the middle of this isolation and, you know, and nobody can go out and, you know, you don't really have time for bullshit then. Yes. And, and I think we also were both experiencing, as I'm sure everybody is in their way, um, that during this time, it's so difficult as artists to work at least i found that yeah. and it's one of the things that amy and i really connected on was the the difficulty of being an artist right now mm -hmm. um, the challenge of that and that was another area that that overlapped that we could connect on right right well i we, of course i'm thinking marta is there going to be some kind of uh TV show in the future about people, people connecting this way or something <laughs> out of the out of what the friendships that come out of COVID or I I don't know is it is it fodder for anything? <laughs> you know I I don't know I think um, whether or not shows will come back in a COVID world a pre-COVID world or a post-COVID world is hard to say. I'm I'm hoping there aren't a million shows that are all done on Zoom. Mm, yeah, yeah. Because they're visually uninteresting and it's hard to do story this way. Um, it's it's hard to you know people are just sort of sitting there. You're not even moving around. So I hope there isn't too much of that. Whether or not there'll be something about friendships post COVID, I don't know. Maybe uh, it's not what. I'm personally thinking about right now because I'm too busy sure. enjoying having a friend in this COVID world. <laughs> well, 
Are you, when you're writing now, because you said she told us uh, before that you're starting back filming in January, the plan. Um, when you're writing the episodes, are you acknowledging COVID or how, I mean, are you just, I, I don't know how you. No, not for Grace and Frankie. We're not acknowledging it. Our feeling is this is a show that predated COVID. Okay. And you can't, in the middle of one episode, and we literally stopped shooting in the middle of one episode. You wow. can't suddenly change the world they live in. And I also think Grace and Frankie is to a certain extent comfort food. Mm. The last thing I think people want right now mm. is to see characters <laughs> who they enjoy watching uh, dealing with the pandemic and wearing masks. Right, right. Have you know Go ahead. I just want to bring something up that um, is that I actually, you know, I'm also really enjoying seeing women taking on a new role or taking on a new task. Like I had mentioned Allison Taylor's sister, um, Carol, before, who's now making these incredibly sexy, gorgeous masks. You know, it's, it's kind of, she has found something wonderful to do um, to create value during this time, right? And that's something huge, you know, right. and I think because I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of things or some things that we would like to do during this time that we've put away and all of a sudden we're using a talent. We're finding that we have another talent or we have a desire for something. And I think that's pretty extraordinary, you know? Yes, and I, I love that about women at this age and I always think of as nothing in your life is wasted so everything you've done before is informing this next thing and you don't know what it may be the next thing is but you're ready for it because of all that you've done in your whole life you leave a really long wide wake <laughs> so i think that a lot of us do look for something new and and i think that probably is also where you, you where you meet women who are where you are at the same point you are is when you go off and, and, and find these new directions. Um, well, so mm -hmm. I think important to realize that um, just as you can do anything, you can start over again at any point in your life, you can make new, and this is what I learned, you can make new friends at any point in your life. Yes. And to not only understand that, but be open to it, mm -hmm. genuinely open to it. Yeah. I'd like to say that, um, Allison. Hi, Amy. Uh, if you find a hobby and in this pandemic world, outdoor hobbies are encouraged. I, I have met a lot of new women friends through hiking and where we live, there's so much beautiful hiking and I just met like three new women that I like have fallen in love with. So I encourage you to find hobbies, yeah, especially outdoor hobbies that you can connect with other women with or and men. And uh, it's phenomenal. And I love you, Marta. <laughs> and Allison, and Allison, I love that you're on here. And Karen Haycox just wrote this. Um, oh, I lost it now. Al Allison is our hike master and mistress. Oh. <laughs> Yay! No, no hiking! Unfortunately, in LA, not enough people are wearing masks on yeah, um, crowded hiking trails. That's actually very true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. really awful. Not in Texas either, which is not too surprising, right? <laughs> well, actually, in Pennsylvania, it's bad too, but there, the trails here are so big that you can like socially distance. Right. Uh, Patricia Grimfield had a, a comment. Patricia, do you want to unmute yourself? So hi, everybody. I, you know, I wanted to mention that I uh, have just poured my life's work into dealing with what I call the middle age conundrum that you're not old, and you're not young. And there's actually a new term that was coined by the Japanese called the old age, younger old age. The old age. Oh. The old age. Wow. And um, so I wrote a book. I'm doing a web series. It's like the nuts and bolts of what you need to do to age well, from food to fitness to relationships, etc. And I'm shaking as I'm telling you this because you have, you know, I, I grew, the 
people I grew up with in New York, I went K through 12 with. We were lifelong friends. And the pushback and the hostility that I got from the women, we're all going to be 60 this year. We were supposed to have a big party, 1960 turned 60. And they just, they just don't want to embrace, oh, you do classes for aging? Well, I don't need that. That's for my mother. That's for when you turn 80. And it's painful for me how hostile and in denial they are about, about this because it's the thinking about, you know, I'm 55, I'm 65. How am I going to maximize my wellness, my relationships, my life, my finances at 70, 80, and 90? And God willing, we'll make it there. Hopefully you want to, maybe you don't. But it's, you know, I'd like to hear from a lot of people on how they feel about that. It's a, it's a turning point you know, 55, 60, 65, where you don't want bullshit in your life and you don't want friends in your life who are not there for you. Right. And you're starting out all over, but there's so much pushback. Um, anyway, that's- Push, Pushback of people, of women who don't want to acknowledge that- They just don't want to acknowledge that they're getting older and, um, and it really isn't, you know, it isn't LA, you know, you can blame it on LA and the shallow aesthetic of it. But I'm seeing it kind of nationwide. Um, we're here to talk about it, but people, Jeannie, you said something, uh, I think it when I, was um, when we were talking about visiting doctors and you said you went to the dermatologist and you went in the bathroom and there was a pamphlet, oh, yeah. I'm making your hands look nicer. And it's like, oh, now my hands are no good. And my I had no idea that I was supposed to be worried about my hands. <laughs> right, and you're, you know, your legs don't look good and you, and you can't go to the beach because you don't look good in a bathing suit. Like, this is insane. You should go and enjoy the water and live your life to the fullest. And it's, it's sad more than anything else. I know what Amy Ferris would say about that. Fuck that. Yeah, I was that. just going to say that, Jeannie. Yeah, yeah. I'm I with you, Amy. I was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and, we, and, and we have written us, we have a great story called about uh, how to get a bikini body Italian style. It's like not that you have to change your body, it changed your damn attitude about your body. Just go and wear your bikini and have fun. So I think that it's, it's a, it's a, it's an attitude. And I, and I do think that these are, there are people who for whatever reason are, are, are res not in the same stage as we are, as, as some of us are. And I think that's what is important is trying to find that the people who are like, yay, you know, bring it on. I'm ready. I'm going. And, and uh, I'm not denying my age, but I'm not like cowered by it either. Right. I mean, <laughs> so no, I think, I think there is something um, really important about embracing your age, but I also think we need to have the space to mourn what's past mm. and to mourn what we no longer are able or, or willing to do come a certain age. Right. Um, and, and I think that is worthy of grief. Yes, it is. Yes, and, it is. It is worthy of grief. Can Absolutely. you talk about what you're mourning? I mean, I know I'm mourning that I'm never going to have kids again. You know, I'm not going to be pregnant again. I mean, as weird as that sounds, but, but I mean, is it that specific or just mourning more the, the idea of youth or? Um, you know, I think it falls in several areas. It's mourning the energy I used to have, which was focused very differently than it is now. I watch my daughter with my grandson and I think, I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I did it because I couldn't do it now. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that, there's, there's mourning, and, and, and I'm not saying shame, but mourning the body I used to have. Mm -hmm. um, I think mourning, the, I, as, as I've gotten older, I've gotten less social. Mm. So mourning all those, those things. Uh, and, and I guess um, on top of all of it is we mourn so many people, um, not only the ones who passed away, but the ones who've 
gone away, the ones who've, who we've left behind. There's so many people that we're mourning that I know I continue to think about on a daily basis. And, and I think all of that's okay and fair and good. Um, I just think it needs to be acknowledged right. so that moving forward isn't blind. Right. And I think, and Amy Rogers, you said it, I was making a note to myself that uh, mourning is probably the first step to acceptance. Right? I mean, you have to acknowledge that it's passed and then move on from there. Would you agree? With I, that? Think, I think it's really, really important that we all accept the fact that our lives are messy and that we are imperfect. And that, I mean, when, Mar when we have had conversations about this, Marta, we, you know, it's, I also mourn things that I did when I was, and, and it's not that I would do it differently, it's that every so often I get a jolt of, why did I give that away? Mm. Why did I do that? Why did I let that person get away with shit? Why didn't I stand up for myself? Um, and I think getting older and we get wiser and we become less in love with, you know, being perfect, um, I don't mourn the body that I used to have. I just wish that I cared more about the body I do have. Does that make sense? I yeah. wish that I, yeah. I, I think often, and this came out of our conversation, Marta, I, I think often about how women don't take care of themselves. We're so conditioned to take care of others or put others before us or make sure someone else is okay. And then what happens is we become depleted and we become depleted and then we don't want to give anything and every one of us has junk drawers every single one of us right we all do we all have shit that but you know i i think it's the older that we get i think the more we need to fall in love with who we are and also not be afraid to go back and say wow i fucked up there or i did that or you know, I, I think that there's this kind of stigma of, you know, no, you shouldn't, you don't, don't look back kind of thing. We all have to, yes. you know? Amy, you, you've written about that with that, your piece about shame. I mean, shame is so powerful. And I, and I think that you're, one of the beautiful things about you, that word, you're messy. It's like, yes, we're all messy and wonderful ways I think you know I think if I think of that song pink raise your glass if you're wrong in all the right ways or something I'm like yeah but um but I I love that about you that the, the 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 willingness to see all of yourself and accept it and I then you do that with other people that's what you give to other people and I think that is probably a key to friendship and isn't there a saying that a friend is someone who knows all about you and loves you anyway or something along those lines <laughs> well you know what if there isn't there should be <laughs> okay but, you know, it's true i mean we're all so fucking imperfect and somebody just wrote um people get mad at us when we start to take care of ourselves and that's um and that's really true people do get angry at us when we decide to put our lives first you know, um, and that has to stop. You know, we, we, we need to take care of ourselves. We need to honor our lives much more than we, than we do. So, and bringing this back to, to friendship, because this is just amazing, but I guess for all of us when we're, who are listening to this is to just to remind ourselves to surround ourselves with people who will, who, who give us the nudge to do that and remind us you know, we're all messy or whatever. And, um, you know, you have to take care, you know, all these things that we're talking about is, and they're out there, people who can help us with all this, right? You know what, Jeannie, conditional anything sucks. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know, whether it's conditional love or, con you know, anything conditional is not worth it. You know, and I think all of us are at a point in our lives and, and going through so much right now that we do, we need to think about, okay, who do we, you know, who do we love? Who do we want in our life? Who do we want to nurture? How can we nurture ourselves better? You know, what is it we've wanted to do that we put off? 
because somebody told us we weren't good enough. You know, well, they were full of shit. Right. And, and go ahead, Amy, finish. No, no, I, I was actually finished. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, was I was also going to say, I was also going to say, I, I have this theory, and it may be um, a, a depressed person speaking, but, or someone who suffers from depression speaking, but I have this theory that happiness is not something you seek. Joy is something you seek. Bingo. And that joy can be found by loving someone and being loved. Mm. Oh, right. Um, that is stunning. So that's how you separate joy and from hap in your mind, how you separate the two? Well, happiness, being happy is a mood. Joy is something that can make you feel happy. Mm. Yeah, that's actually true. Right. So joy is the active thing to seek. What makes you joyful? You know, if it's a friend, if it's a flower, if it's a photo of a flower, thank you, Amy. <laughs> Amy sent me the most beautiful photograph that the color is just so breathtaking. Uh, it literally takes my breath away and I'm hanging it by my bed and I'll send you a picture of it. Um, okay. But seriously, and, and I think... We also have to understand there are many, many kinds of friendships, That's all of which um, bring joy. I mean, here, sitting here is my friend Tracy, and we've known each other since our 31-year-olds year olds were two, and Tracy, I, I feel like we're family. I can be pretty fucked up around Tracy, and she's pretty good with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but it is, you know, it's one of those things, just sometimes texting with Tracy just makes me smile. And I think it's so important to embrace love and being loved. And let's just ask, uh, probably close up on this, but what is the, what is it that female friendship provides, especially now that a, re uh, a relationship with a man doesn't? I mean, many of us are married, many divorce or that there's, it, it's so important. And what is it to you that's, that is the big difference? You no, know, I, I can't say this is true of all women. And I can't say it's true of all men. But I find the women that I choose to be with are good listeners. Yeah. They let me lean on them. They lean on me. They want to be heard. It's as we were saying before, it's reciprocal. And they don't try to fix it. They don't try to fix the problem. They hear the problem. Oh, I love that. And what about you, Amy? What's the, um, you have a wonderful husband. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> you have a wonderful husband. I have a wonderful cat, Molly. I have a wonderful girlfriend, Allison, who I'm looking at right now. Um, what was the question, Jeannie? Oh, no. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> what is it that the, the uh, female friendships give us, provide that male relationships, you know, husband, your, your spouse, what is it? Why is it so? You no, know, I, I actually feel like I can tell my girlfriend stuff that I cannot tell Kim. And I feel like um, I just feel that when you have a really amazing friendship or friendships that you can share stuff with women, that you can go deeper, you can, you know, I'm here, the messiness, right? The, um, one of the things that I do find in, with men is that, and it's not just Ken, it's they want you to finish the story. It's kind of like get to the point. Yeah, <laughs> get to the point. And my girlfriends will sit there and like, they'll pull it out of me. They'll help me t get something out of me when it's like, you know, if Allison will call and she'll say, you know, well, how are you doing? You know, and I'll say, well, I'm not doing all that good. And she'll say, well, what's going on? And, you know, so she, it's, it's a wonderful thing to want to be heard, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know, we hear as kids, you know, you shouldn't be seen or, you know, what is that? You know, little girls shouldn't be seen and heard. Well, you know what? We need to be seen and heard. And I think women do that, really good women, really great friends like Alexia and Allison and Karen, really great friends and Marta. They want to hear, you know, and I think men do get more impatient. It's kind of like, you know, hurry up, I want to get laid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You know, and, and with, with good friends, you get to open your heart. Right. And not all women are good friends and not all women are good, but the ones that are, that really stick to your ribs, right. we shouldn't let them go. You know what I'm going to do, but this is going to be the last question for both of you, because this is something I've always said to my sons. I said, to have good friends, you have to be a good friend. And so I want to hear from both of you um, what makes a good friend, what makes a good friend? Amy. I think a good friend is someone who champions you. I think a good friend is someone who loves you and sends you a gift because you're hurting. I think a good friend uh, picks up the phone, even if you haven't spoken for a few days or, or you know, and doesn't say, hey, how come you didn't call me back, oh. right? Um, I think a good friend reciprocates. I think a good friend holds you when you're hurting. I think a good friend um, is really truly there for you. I, I, think, I think good friends are, bring out your joy, you know, um, and want you to be happy and want the best for you. Yeah. Good friends really, truly, there, there's, a, there's a saying, I don't know where it came from, Marta, in Hollywood, that Hollywood is like a town that wishes you well when you're terminally ill. <laughs> and, and I always think that that's, those are the kind of people you don't want in your life. And, and I think a good friend is someone who says, how are you? Yeah. And when they hear the answer, they say, how can I help? Yes. But they're also someone that says, I need you, and here's how you can help. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, absolutely. And um, there's, I think we could go, I, from the questions, I didn't get to like only a fourth of the comments and questions. But what I'm going to do, what I always do with these is I, you know, recording, so I will uh, send everybody a, a link to the recording and I'll send it people a link to the chat so people can read some of the comments because they're wonderful comments and and uh, again we, we need to have this part we need to have part two about women women friendships but um, I just uh, somebody asked at one point if what if I could explain what next tribe is and Me next tribe members so next tribe is a digital community uh, magazine and community where we are all aging boldly, we're smart, engaged women who are like, I'm just getting started, and, and we feel still inside, we feel 29, and we, we aren't gonna let anybody tell us how we should act at this age and what, what's important. We're, we, are, um, we are a tribe of, of really involved women. So, and to be a member, you get special, it's just helping us with our articles and our events and we do trips and you get discounts on events and trips and once we start doing live things again and um you, you get perks like getting to come in early to see amy and martha and chat with them so um anyway i hope people will join and it, it helps us and we're we are all about supporting women at this age and letting people uh changing what people think of women this age. You know, that's a really mission of ours. We, when we're trying to get into more activism, we're having a, where we're actually going to be not just talking about age, the ageism, but ageism and, where, and sexism and where they intersect. So um, there's, a, there's a lot of potential here, just so much we can do because women this age have so much going for them. They've got energy, they've got ideas, they've got experience, right? And they're, as we've talked about, they're, they're, uh, they're not afraid to say no to things and they know what works and what doesn't. So I think it's a great time of life. And I wish every, I think everybody who's here is wishing they had a friendship like 
yours and Marta's. So <laughs> I hope all of you do. And if not, I hope you can find that soon because that's really special. And I thank you, Amy, for coming and, and suggesting this. Thanks so much. Thank you, Amy. Welcome. And I thank you, Marta. Marta, we will be looking at the next season with spent with new interest to see how it all it's the last season. So we're really interested to see what's going to develop for Grace and Frankly. Frankie. Thank you. Uh, anyway, thank you to all of you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.